Okay. Welcome and hello everyone and thank you for taking time to join us. Your hosts today are Denise Pasavento and myself, Addie Spark Kim, and we are excited to be talking to you about healthy ideas for a healthy school year, or as we have also titled it, back to school but not back to the doctor. This is our second year hosting this event, and before we tell you a little more about ourselves, let us tell you why we're doing this. I'm guessing if you're like us, you've been through the battles of illness on all sorts of levels. Hopefully you haven't dealt with anything life-threatening, but let's face it, even when you're in the middle of a full-blown cold, the flu, the stomach bug, um, horrible allergies or asthma, basically any of our common viruses today, it can actually feel like a death sentence when you're in the middle of it. Am I right? Having sick kiddos or being sick ourselves as parents can result in school days and lessons lost. It can result in work days missed. Um, not to mention just throwing our routine completely out of whack and having loads of, pile, loads of laundry pile up and um, housework, everything just kind of seems to get completely derailed, which can also be exhausting and result in some, you know, just general mood depressing and, you know, all, all sorts of not so very fun things. So what if you could do some simple practices that could have a huge impact on your total wellness? What if you could minimize or in some cases totally avoid those annoying illnesses altogether? Sounds pretty awesome, right? Well, we're going to take this hour to share with you some strategies on how to do just that. So as I already said, I'm Addie. Um, from the family side of things, I am a mom of two boys, age six and almost eight, and I have um, a four-legged daughter, Stella, our puppy, or well, she's not a puppy, she's 11, but, um, and then professionally, I'm a certified health coach and a Juice Plus sales coordinator. My passion is helping busy people adopt simple solutions to better their total health, and I'm excited to share some of those tools with you today. Um, now I'm going to hand it over to Denise, who's going to introduce herself. Hello. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm a mom of three kids, ages five, seven, and nine. I'm also a fitness instructor and a business owner. So that means like a lot of you, I'm judging, um, I'm juggling a lot of things at once, but I choose to do this for a couple of reasons. One, I truly enjoy helping others on their health journey. And because being a mom, quite frankly, has brought me to my knees often. I found myself truly humbled by the daunting but necessary task of being my family's number one health advocate. That's a pretty big deal. And the saying, it takes a vi village, the cliche, couldn't be more true. I'm proud to link arms with Addie for this event and to welcome all of you to our Healthy Living Revolution. We hope to share a lot of great tips, but also workable strategies that you can implement um, at home in your everyday lifestyle. Even if you just walk away with a couple of helpful nuggets, um, that would be a win for us. Uh, so with that, Addie, let's, let's get right into it. Yes, let's definitely get right into it. Um, well, almost. Right before we dig into all the juicy nuggets, I want to um, just make a couple points. And one is that the information we're sharing with you today is based on our own wellness education and training, as well as strategies that we ourselves have tested and incorporated into our own family's lives as both wellness coaches, as well as enthusiasts. We're not doctors or medically certified. However, we are going to share some information that has been scientifically reviewed, clinically reviewed, um, and there's nothing in this presentation that we do not personally practice on a regular basis. We are walking our talk every day, and we have had profound changes in our family's health because of it, which is why we've decided to share this information, because we want all of you to reap the same benefits that have made a significant in impact um, in our own health and our, and our family's health. So now I'm going to turn it back to Denise so that she can paint a picture of the world that we live in and why we're even more motivated to share this information with you today. Thanks. So, you know, as a mom, what keeps me awake at night isn't necessarily that my kids are going to get hurt or um, like, like kind of have some freak accident or, you know, who knows, uh, the, the list of things we worry about are endless. But um, what really kind of gets me going are, 
you know, just this, the reality of this modern health crisis, if you want to call it that, um, that chronic illness is on the rise. It's these everyday things that plague our families from like eczema and the allergies, like I've had to deal with, with my family, but then also the increase of uh, behavioral issues, ADD, autism, um, you know, all kinds of things. And, and then I think about just the everyday illnesses that last year, you know, I watched so many friends and family just get wiped out by the flu. And it could be just an everyday cold that just spirals. So approximately 164 million days of school are lost each year in the K through 12 grades. And an average of four and a half, six sick days um, per kid, per student. That's what we're, we're seeing um, per year. And that's, those days are just lost. You know, they're, they're, they're missed lessons and missed days at school and they're not learning. And like I said about last year's flu season, there were actually 180 flu associated pediatric deaths last season. That is really scary. That's really scary because now we're talking about being afraid for if our kids spike a fever. Um, and I'm not trying to employ scare tactics here, just trying to say that, you know, these stats are pretty shocking. They're depressing for me, but um, at the same time, it makes me all the more, feel all the more empowered to try to do everything I can to reduce our odds of suffering like this, but then also to, um, to kind of turn things around and lay some groundwork for, uh, for going forward and strengthening um, our family's immune system. So now let's kind of talk about those strategies for how we can turn this around and, and fight back. Um, Addie, let's go ahead and, or actually I'm gonna go ahead and get right into the, um, those strategies. So moving on, there's four things. We kind of narrowed it down to the core four components of keeping our families healthy. Um, and we want to simplify it as much as possible. So that's why we've narrowed this guidance to um, eat more whole foods, drink more water, sleep more, stress less, and get more exercise. So these four points are nothing new. We've all heard it. But we really want to take a deeper dive today in each of these areas um, and try to demonstrate that really working hard to, um, to strengthen our habits in these four areas can make so much of a difference. So, Addie, what do we mean when we talk about eating more whole foods? Can, can you talk about that? Yes, absolutely. Um, and I just want to say quickly that I'm – so big on the core four for total amount, total wellness. Um, and I'm excited that we're going to walk you through all of them today because we've got some really great points to make in each of those areas, but we're going to spend the most time in this particular area because, um, when we really look at all of these things, nutrition is really key for our optimal health. In my book, it's number one, Without essential nutrients, our bodies simply cannot function the way that they're meant to. And for our kiddos, whose bodies are still developing and growing, it's critical that they get good nutrition, not to just stay healthy, but to help them learn, um, to support their bodies on all kinds of levels, including from a mental health perspective, even from a self-worth perspective. Um, we want to make sure that they're, that they're staying fit, they're staying healthy. Um, we've all heard the saying an apple a day, but in today's world, unfortunately we face many more health threats than generations that preceded us. And it's no longer just an apple a day to keep the doctor away. We need pineapple and cherries and blueberries and spinach and beets, peppers, kale, garlic, bananas, many more. Um, and we've always needed those things, but we also now need them in greater quantities. Um, we also need them to be herbicide and pesticide free, not sprayed with other chemicals to make them shiny and pretty, and that don't travel 3,000 miles or more sometimes 
from the farms that they're grown into our plates. I think you guys get the picture, um, but what we're just trying to say is we need a rainbow of high quality nutrition every single day if we want to enjoy consistent health. I want to just underscore that, consistent health. And part of the reason why is that our soil quality has degraded. So we have fewer nutrients in our soil. Um, that means that our food supply is less nutrient rich than it was a century ago. Or simply put, we would need to eat 26 of today's apples to equal the same nutrient value as one apple in the year 1914. That's kind of scary. That's crazy. Um, it's crazy and overwhelming. That's a lot of food. Um, so we also live in a world where the majority of our food is grab and go. Um, we, it's highly processed and designed for convenience. And, you know, as busy families, we just have a lot going on. We're juggling our kids' activities and work and all kinds of crazy schedules. Um, and oftentimes, special needs for our kids, um, not just even the basic things like picky eaters, you know, sometimes we're dealing with much deeper level um, developmental things. And so in dealing with that, nutrition has to be number one um, in order to support all of our family needs. So um, if we aren't prioritizing our health, despite our busy lives, then what happens is we run in the risk of burning out, making ourselves sick. And Denise and I have firsthand experience with that. Um, we both found ourselves in that situation. And a, a big part of why we're here today is because of that. We both have had our own health awakenings where we have been in this place where we are just, you know, sick or down or like the illness keeps coming and it's just derailing over and over. And um, we both found our places, ourselves in a place where we wanted to take control of our health back. Um, and and we've been able to successfully do that. And it's just made such a huge impact um, on our family's lives that it's become our why for making our, health, our family's health number one. So another thing that is being talked about a lot, um, there was an amazing uh, Time uh, magazine issue on this about our DNA is not our destiny. And there's tons of research to back that up. So even though we might be genetically predisposed to certain things or have a family history, of certain diseases, that doesn't mean that we can't do things to reduce our risk or prevent those illnesses from happening to us. Um, so I always like to make that point. I think it's a really big one because we we're in so much more control than I think a lot of us believe that we are. Um, so it's up to us to paint a wellness path that supports our long-term goals and paves the road for our kids to have really good health well into the future. So how do we do that? Okay, so we're gonna jump in on the next few slides and give you some, um, some healthy meal ideas. I don't, I don't wanna just read through all of these examples. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna talk about some ways that we incorporate this into our own family's daily routine. Um, you can see here, these are just some ideas. There, there's so many others um, that are out there and we'll share some fun recipe ideas after this, um, some grocery shopping lists. But it's a lot of times here, like when it comes to cooking and meal prep, it's really about making healthy swaps for things. So for example, you see overnight oats here. Um, these can be made with things like almond milk or coconut milk, hemp milk that all have really great um, nutrients and healthy fats that help our kids' brain development. Um, and you can make it fun, almost like a parfait. Um, doing things like French toast, uh, but, but swapping the batter for a non-dairy milk. So for example, I often do this where I do a hemp milk batter. Um, I still use eggs, but I put in cinnamon and I'll make a big batch and I'll freeze it. And then all I have to do is pull them out in the morning and throw it in the toaster, just as if I had bought them at the grocery store in the freezer section. So things like that can make a big difference and I'll often use like a sprouted grain bread or even a gluten-free bread and once it's made in the French toast, my kids seem to complain about it less. So it's just a way for me to find some other ways to sneak in a lot of the good. Um, one point I do wanna make um, here is with healthier cereals. So, you know, cereal is a great, super easy breakfast option for kids. My kids love it. They had cereal this morning, but it's really important to pay attention to ingredients. So many of the like 
popular brands in the grocery store have a ton of additives that really just are not good. Um, they can impact our kids on so many negative levels. So you want to make sure that you're looking for a healthier version of cereals that your kids may like. And you can get these kind of cereals pretty much anywhere. I, for example, shop at Target for most of my grocery shopping needs these days. Um, true story. And the Simply Balanced line has incredible options. Um, they have a healthier version of for example, healthier fruit loops that are just made with vegetable dyes and not, um, they don't have food dyes in them. Um, they don't have high fructose corn syrup. A lot of them aren't, you know, they're, they're non GMO products. Um, so those are all things that you definitely want to avoid when shopping for your kids and become a skilled ingredient, um, label reader. If the, if the ingredients are super crazy long and have all kinds of weird names of stuff you can't pronounce, then chances are that you probably don't want to have them in your kids' bodies. Um, so I, I just wanted to make a quick point about that because that's a really easy quick fix um, for doing things that are, are a little healthier. Um, okay, so smoothies is something that Denise and I both um, do every single day in our household. Uh, whether it's for our kids or for ourselves, um, our husbands will make smoothies and take them as a running out the door to work. So we're, we're big on smoothies. All my friends here joke that I'm kind of like the smoothie queen. Um, so one of the things I just want to make a couple points on here is you don't have to do like a, a vegetable or even like a fruit type of smoothie if your kids have aversions that way. Um, one of the things that I do is I make it almost like a milkshake. So taking a plant-based protein powder, um, and Denise is going to talk about the one that we both use in just a second, but, you know, using one that is filled with all kinds of essential minerals and nutrients and macronutrient um, content. And that um, also has some superfoods in it. I'll use that as a base and then put like coconut milk or something that's thicker, like I'll use like the actual coconut milk from a can. Um, you can get this at Trader Joe's, for example. And then I might sneak like half an avocado in there, half a banana. It makes it super creamy. Just throw some ice in and you have this really thick, almost ice cream like smoothie. My kids think it's a milkshake and they love it. I will often do this um, with dinner you know, on nights where I am rushing and I don't have time to prepare something super healthy. So we will go for the mac and cheese at times or like I'll cook some chicken tenders, but I'll make the smoothie to go with it. And so that I know they're getting a balance of, um, of all of that good nutrition in there. So um, one other quick thing on this is smoothie bowls. Uh, I'm completely obsessed with making them. And if you follow me on Instagram, you will see pictures of my kids, the beach, and smoothie bowls. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much you know what my mood board is these days. And um, I always include, or almost always include the recipes in there, but we'll share some fun ones after this as well. Those, that's a great way to take something in and turn it into a meal that's super nutritious. You can put fun granola toppings, um, shredded coconut, berries and make them and sneak all kinds of awesome things in there. And the kids think it's kind of, it's like a Sunday. It's almost like a dessert. I just happen to like them because I like the crunch along with the texture of the smoothie. So for me, it's, it's like a win-win on both levels. Okay. Um, moving along on um, healthy lunchbox ideas. This is pretty um, intuitive. So we're not going to go through everything on this list. But I think the key here is just make sure you're including at least one fresh fruit or vegetable every single day in your kid's lunchbox. I will, you know, fully admit that we have packaged foods um, and snack items that get included and not everything in my kid's lunchbox is like uber nutritious, but I always make sure that they have some cut strawberries or sliced apples or oranges or little carrots. Um, cucumber slices, something in there that is a whole food. And just know, them knowing that they're going to have that every day and that they have to consume that stuff 
if I see that they didn't eat it, then they don't get special treats after school. Um, so I'm just really a stickler for making sure that they know the importance of eating fruits and vegetables and a variety every single day and putting them in the lunchbox um, is one of the ways that I incentivize them to make sure that they're eating at least some with every single meal. We do have a really awesome lunch menu that you can use. Um, getting your kids involved in the lunch packing process is a, another great way to really get them on board and help them make healthy choices. So we're gonna post that um, or email that out if you would like it, let us know. But you can print it out and you can go through it with them and help them identify things that they're gonna like, but it's also empowering them to make good choices. Okay, so, um, and then just moving on to our healthy snack and meal ideas. When Denise and I both lived in DC and were just two blocks away, um, one day we went over to her house and she had this um, muffin tray out and she had snacks in it and fruits and veggies. And it was so awesome to see the kids come in, grab handfuls, and then just run back in and play. I mean, she had tomatoes in there. She had all kinds of stuff in there and they were, they were eating all of it. And I have adopted this method um, ever since and I use it all the time. Um, I think it's a great idea. Like, you know, even like I was just referencing before, if I don't do the smoothie night on when we're having pasta or mac and cheese, I'll do the, I'll do this muffin tray and I'll just put a bunch of cut up veggies and fruit in there and my kids will have to snack on that um, with their dinner. Um, and I will tell them like, listen guys, you know, you're having mac and cheese, so you've got to eat some of this fruits and veggies to go with it and balance out. And so that again is just making, um, time to educate and, you know, teaching them that they're eating these foods needs to be a priority. The other thing that I really want to say is that don't make it complicated. You know, we're, we're all super busy and meals don't have to be this elaborate affair, I am the queen of getting certain staples at either Trader Joe's or Target or the local grocery store that are in my pantry or in my freezer or in my fridge, even if, you know, like healthy meats for a couple of days where I can literally pull stuff out and make meals in 15 minutes. So you'll see here just, um, so this is Van in the picture here eating a red pepper which it just blows my mind a lot of times now that my kids will like gravitate to this stuff, which is, it's just awesome. Um, but you know, there's a picture here of the ancient grains, um, chicken nuggets from, um, from target. And these are, you know, they do non GMO type of products and it, it's easy. Like you're just throwing them in the oven, but it's a healthier version of a, a traditional kid's food. Um, and then broccoli, they also have now sustainably harvested wild caught fish in their freezer section. It takes 10 minutes to defrost it. And then you could, you know, cook up some quinoa or a healthy grain and um, you cook your fish for 10 minutes in the oven with some olive oil and lemon. And then you serve it and you've got a healthy meal. Um, we're big on taco night. So here I have um, an example of like grass fed ground beef that I bought at Target. <laughs> And I can just make tacos and, you know, put out again, like a variety of stuff. And I let my kids make their own. And it's just really cool to see them getting engaged. Um, my little one is really picky. So we have to really push him to eat some of the healthier stuff. But that's why just having all these things on hand makes such a big difference. Um, and then this bottom picture is from Trader Joe's. Like these, that's all stuff that I bought at Trader Joe's just to keep on hand for healthy snacks. So, you know, things like a healthy popcorn chips, um, hummus, um, doing like their lentil dips. There's all kinds of great things. And then some of it is things that I put into our smoothies, like dates, um, maca powder, for example, which is a superfood, things like that. So I just wanted to put out some of these examples because we know it can be overwhelming to figure out what to make for dinner but just having a few of these healthy, healthier options of staples is just something that's really key. Um, you know, stocking up on the weekend so that you have things for the week and it's, it's just easy. You can make it in 15 minutes or less. So, okay, that was a lot of info to share. So now I am going to um, turn it over to Denise and she's gonna share with you another amazing tool that helps make our lives a lot easier. 
I think we need to add a disclaimer that Target is not a sponsor of this presentation. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. Okay. So I love the focus here on making things convenient. And I just want to make the quick point um, to piggyback on, on Addie's example of the muffin tray. Um, here we're making it convenient for the kids, but it also needs to be convenient for us. So I know that um, I do better at remembering to put those whole foods out if they're ready. So I try to... Um, once I get my produce, maybe chop, peel, slice, dice, whatever you need to do as soon as you get home. And so instead of heading for the pantry to the pantry for snacks, um, you know that you have something in the fridge or like, or if your kids say, Hey, can I have a snack? You can say yes, but it has to be from the fridge, not the not the pantry or wherever you keep your, your packaged snacks. So it needs to be workable in our everyday if you're going to actually implement it. So um, just kind of wanna, wanna make that point. Um, but it also brings me to our next point is that another great way to get real foods into our kids is plant powders. I'm so proud to be partnered with a company that continues to be on the leading edge of the health food industry. If this is the first time you're hearing about plant powders, um, I promise it won't be a, the last. Um, more and more companies are coming up with this concept and different brands of produce powder, powders are on the market. Um, and just know that Juice Plus has been around for quite some time, um, since the early 80s, and they're not newcomers to this field. Um, for those of you not familiar with Juice Plus, it is simply concentrated fruits and vegetables and berries in capsule or chewable form. So it's the actual food ground down, dehydrated and ground down into capsule or chewable form. So all the nutrients stay intact. Um, it's simple, it's easy, and the idea is it absolutely is not a real meal replacement. Um, and it's not a replacement for eating all the good foods, um, but simply it fills in the gaps between what we should be eating and what we don't. What we should be eating is seven to 13 fruits and vegetables a day, and that's for our kids too. And it needs to be a variety, um, not just the same thing. A lot of times we ask people, um, what do you know, do you, are you happy or satisfied with how you're doing with, with your fruit and veggie consumption and people will say yes but then when you we ask what do you actually eat it might be broccoli every night or you know the banana in the morning and, and an apple or um, a lot of times we go for the same things so what these capsules and chewables do is they ensure that we get the variety there's something called synergy in nature where eating an apple by itself is awesome but if you add an, if you eat the apple with leafy greens and maybe some berries and some other whole foods, you're gonna get that much more, more bang out of that apple. Uh, all the nutrients are become magnified and um, so it's that much better. Um, so for my family, this is really our preventive health insurance policy. I, just another quick anecdote, I was at a health fair yesterday. Um, and I spread out all of these fruits and veggies at, on the table. Um, and it was amazing. So you get the, the visual, you can have this every day and you really, you really can grasp the concept that it's not realistic to try to get this many in our body every day, but it's possible. It's possible with the, the capsules and the chewables. So I do want to mention that this company is so committed to helping families get healthier and making it more accessible for everyone. Um, so they offer the Children's Health Study, which allows kids ages 4 to 21, I believe, um, to get their, their Juice Plus chewables or capsules for free with one adult house, household order. In exchange, families have to answer a questionnaire about quarterly, which is a great way for the company to um, get subjective feedback straight from the consumer 
on customer consumer experience. So they really want to be diligent in doing their homework and, and hearing back from, from the consumer. Um, so moving on to what does Juice Plus do? I mean, we know that fruits and vegetables, um, we all benefit from eating fruits and vegetables. Um, and what's unique about Juice Plus is that it's actually been clinically proven to be effective. So there are over 35 clinical research studies and I could go on and on about them, but that's a whole different pre presentation. But what we want to highlight is the simple fact that there is absolutely no nutritional supplement on the market that has this kind of solid third-party, peer-reviewed, gold standard research to back it. And that's something that I feel extremely proud of. Um, and when we're talking about getting back to the original point of this modern day health crisis, when you look at just some of these things on this slide uh, in terms of protecting DNA and reducing inflammation, boosting immune system, reducing oxidative stress, and that's stress from anywhere, anything from if you're an athlete working out really hard to, um, you know, just, just being exposed to just the, the, um, the different uh, stress in our everyday lives. Um, so it's this kind of thing. We're really looking at the foundational biomarkers of health and boosting those. Um, and what I think is awesome about it is that this company is so committed to looking at overall health and trying to make it more convenient that we have a great range of products. So in addition to the capsules and the chewables, there's also, um, those are the micronutrients, the, the things that, the nutrients that help us at a cellular level. And then they also have products that offer the macronutrients. And those are the, the carbs and the proteins what we usually think about when we think about um, uh, food for performance. Um, so there's plant-based protein bars and um, Addie mentioned smoothies. We both use the complete uh, shake mix and that offers not just protein, it offers a good amount of fiber, which helps you um, feel full. It's um, something that a lot of protein powders don't have. Um, so I really love this one. Um, in addition, there's a full spectrum omega and um, that when we look at that, it's you're thinking about brain health and how can you support your, your family in that area. Um, omegas are awesome and most of us are lacking in them. Um, and what I love about this Omega is that it's a plant-based full spectrum Omega derived straight from the source, which is algae and not from fish. So you don't have the contaminations uh, or the contamination to worry about. Um, and just, I wanna get back to the complete really quickly. So with, with the capsules, you're getting 30 fruits and vegetables and berries and it's a variety. Now, if you add in the complete, you're adding in another 15 macronutrients to your diet or your family's diet every day. Um, so that's pretty powerful. Um, and I know Addie has the same experience as me in that what this has done for our family has really been a game changer. It's meant fewer visits to the doctor, um, it's, it's not a silver bullet. It doesn't mean that we're going to never get sick, but if we do get sick, it doesn't run through our family necessarily like, like the plague. It's not, we're not all guaranteed to be knocked out and, um, we recover pretty quickly. Um, and we've also experienced reduced or eliminated allergy and eczema symptoms along with better digestive health, um, We've suffered from, my kids have suffered from constipation um, in the past, and these products really help in that area. And finally, the Tower Garden. 
Now, I do not have a green thumb at all. Um, Addie, when I first met her, she came to my house. She did a health, she did a consultation, and I was like, oh, I can't have plants. I kill plants. And, but I can grow a tower garden. I can grow greens and herbs and all kinds of things in our tower garden because it's controlled, it's very user friendly, no soil. Um, it's on a timer, so it's self watering. Um, and it's pretty amazing to see my kids' reactions to um, to growing this garden and the fact that they can participate. Um, we've even introduced tower gardens at schools. Addie and I both have, and it's a great learning tool for teachers, especially in this era where STEM education is just such is so big, and teachers are looking for creative ways to engage students. Um, what I love about this too is that it's environmentally friendly, so it uses 90% less resources than traditional farming, and you can grow all year round with grow lights. You can take the tower indoor. So this is a pretty basic product line, but it is so impactful. And I get just want to also get back to touching on the health fair that I was at yesterday and I had all these fruits and vegetables and berries spread out and um, I did a little challenge one I wanted to see if everyone could name each each thing which that was pretty funny um, and people got really into it but then also I asked for for them to estimate how much did all this cost me because I had bought it that morning and I shopped at a um, a food store that was sort of in the middle of a Trader Joe's and a Whole Foods, just to give you an idea. And um, Addie, do you think people underestimated or overestimated? I'm going to say they underestimated the cost of being able to buy, buy this variety of food on a regular basis. Yes. So the average guess was like 20 to $40, 20 to $40, like for all of that. And I, it was pretty amazing. They ever, or what it cost me that morning was $92. So almost a hundred dollars. And then you look at it and with like the chopping and all of that, like somebody said to me, and that's not realistic to have every day. And I was like, yeah, you're right. You're right. On top of it, it's expensive. It's not convenient. Um, so just to make the point that I guess I want to challenge you to think about how much does your wellness cost how does your how much does your preventative or what's your preventative health care worth to you um you can get all this great nutrition in your body for less than five dollars a day and i think that just blows my mind i think it's so awesome so um awesome for you awesome for the kiddos um and I really choose every day prevention over, over treatment or medications. Um, and so that's why we are going to be doing this for the rest of our lives. And that's why I'm so passionate and love this business. So I think we've done an awesome job on covering the whole foods and why they're important. And um, Addie, let's move on to the second of the, of the core four. Okay. Yeah. Real quick though, before we do that, I just want to make a couple points about some of the ingredients here um, that I know, for example, are things that I might not even find in my local grocery store, like elderberry, black currant, bilberry. Um, but these are amazing antioxidant boosters. I know before Juice Plus, I was spending a ton of money on something called Sambucus, which is an elderberry extract. So anytime my kids got a cold, you know, I was giving them, you know, teaspoons of Sambucus and, and it helped, but you know, to now have an option that they're getting all this every day, that is huge for prevention. And if they start to, you know, show signs of a cold, I just double them up. Um, Juice Plus has a food label, not a vitamin. So you can take as much Juice Plus in a day as you want. Um, so that's just another quick point I wanted to make um, and just echo all of the incredible benefits 
that Denise just mentioned, because this really truly has been the number one game changer for my family's foundation of health. We do a lot of other things as well, but we never go a day without, um, without taking our juice plus we travel with it. I mean, like literally hardly ever a day goes by that it's not in our bodies. Um, and, and that's where I see the biggest difference. Um, but along with all of this good nutrition, um, there's, there are some other key things that are important for maximizing our total health. So one of those is water, 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 water. Um, this is so important. And truthfully, it's something that I struggle with every single day. Um, I mean, one of the things is, you know, usually by the time we're thirsty or feeling thirsty, we're already dehydrated. Um, so we really have to push ourselves to drink water throughout the day. So they don't even reach that point of like thinking, Oh, I'm really thirsty. I need a glass of water. Um, and the more water we drink, the more we're going to be really in tune with our body. Um, sometimes we start to get cravings for something salty or even something sweet. Sometimes that is just part of our dehydration. And you know, what we really just need to do is drink more water. So if you start having one of those cravings, I would um, encourage you to go drink a glass of water first, like a full, full glass of water and wait 15 minutes and then see if you still have that craving. Sometimes you're satiated just by getting that, that water into your body. Um, the other thing is dehydration can cause a variety of health risks that are not fun. They're certainly not sexy. Um, diarrhea, vomiting, um, you can have rapid heart rate, um, you know, just the, the excessive thirst, you know, the dry mouth, all of those things. Um, I know often when I'm dehydrated, like my eyes get drier, uh, which is not fun for someone who wears contacts. Um, you know, your, your seasonal allergies can flare up. There's, there's a can host I of things. Can I add one? Yeah. yeah. Bad breath. Bad breath. Absolutely. All of those things are stemming from lack of hydration in our bodies. And, um, you know, so we, so we really need to hydrate. Um, the other reason we need to drink a lot of water is that we are in today's world exposed to a combination of over 80,000 man-made chemicals that have not been tested for the impact to human health. So those are in the air we breathe, they're in the water we drink, they're in our carpets and our furniture and our paints and the products that we buy at the groceries, you know, at the, um, the, the beauty products that we buy and put on our bodies, our shampoos, everywhere around us are things um, that have toxins, our food. <laughs> so we need, to, we need to be drinking water every day because we got to flush those toxins out. Um, they can get stored in our fat cells. Um, which is often something that can contribute to lack of weight loss um, because our bodies are actually protecting our organs from those toxins. And so we can add on extra weight that we probably don't want to be there. Um, so in addition to, you know, getting all the micronutrients to help do that, do like a flushing and, and cell repair, we also need hydration to just really get that stuff moving. Um, so a couple key, a couple examples, um, because I said earlier, this is something that I really struggle with. I don't love the taste of water. So things that, you know, Denise and I have both found to be helpful are keep a, keep a glass of water by your bedside, keep one by the sink. So even first thing in the morning, when you wake up, you have a full glass of water. Um, I often drink it at night. I know that sometimes people don't like to drink right before they go to bed. They don't want to wake up to go to the bathroom, but then try to make sure you're getting liquids earlier in the evening. Um, and then first thing in the morning, um, I will often just have a warm cup of lemon water in the morning. That's going to alkalize the digestive system. It's going to start the hydration process. Um, so it really helps me start my, my day off on a better foot. Um, the other thing that I, um, really recommend is to flavor your water with, um, with awesome herbs or lemon. Um, I actually, I don't know if you can see, I have mint in my water today from my tower garden. Um, and I, I have to put like cucumber and lemon or oranges, um, different things in my water to make me drink it more. Cause it just has a bland taste to me. Um, and I don't drink other things. I don't drink soda. 
Um, I'm not even a coffee drinker. Like I'm a tea and a water drinker. So I feel like for me to make it interesting because I have pretty bland drinks <laughs> anyways, I got to like add some other stuff in there. Um, something else that's great is to add essential oils. So you could put a drop of lemon oil or a drop of peppermint oil in your water um, just to improve the taste of it. But those also have some really great um, health benefits as well. So real quick, um, and then we'll move on from this is the formula for figuring out how much you should be drinking is to take your body weight, divide it in half, and that is the number um, of cups of water you should drink each. Oh, so here, I'm sorry. There's two different formulas. There's this one here, divide your body weight and then divide that by eight and find the cups. The other option is you can take your body weight, divide it in half, and that's the number of ounces you should drink. So there's two different ways to calculate that. Um, but either one is good rule of thumb for just tracking your water. And there's some great apps that actually help you with that as well. So, okay. Um, another kiki wellness tip is sleep. Oh my gosh, this is always such a hot topic <laughs> because it's also challenging for a lot of us, especially um, those of us that are go, go, go all day. Um, I tend to be someone who doesn't really sit down and relax until like the 15 minutes before I get in bed at night. I'm not recommending this practice at all, <laughs> but <laughs> that's just sort of how things go for me. Um, that's just sort of my rhythm, but sleep is really important. And I am someone who does not function well at all on lack of sleep. Um, my kiddos are the same, especially my oldest one. Like he needs sleep or he is so grumpy and grumpy and like just starts to completely unravel during the day. So I, I think we just really want to emphasize, um, sleep for both your physical and mental development for kids this is so key. They're still growing and there's so much development happening. And sleep is, I mean, a lot of people think of this as a rest time. It's actually a very active time for our bodies. They're doing so much repair. Um, there's so much tissue growth that happens. Um, energy is restored while we're sleeping. So there's, there's a different way to look at sleep as, you know, not just this time of like, oh, we need to calm our bodies and you know, get some rest. It's actually, we need to, you know, turn our brains off so the rest of our body can go to work on doing all of the tasks that it, that happen every single day. Um, so, you know, especially when you have kiddos that are active and that are doing sports, um, you know, they need, they need extra time to recover. So this chart is just a helpful gauge um, this is going to be in a handout, so you don't have to memorize this. Um, we'll we'll send this out, but we just really want to um, to emphasize how much you know sleep should be a priority. And if you're struggling with this, either for yourself or your kids, um, get in touch with Denise or I because we do have some other tools that can really help with sleep. Um, something that I have been um, doing more is is adding like an um, a, uh, sorry, a bioavailable um, hemp oil that I will sometimes take myself or give to my kiddos. And that can sometimes help when they get off track and really get their circadian rhythms back in line because it's really supporting their nervous system. So I'm always happy to talk to people about that, but there are tips, there are tools that can really help if this is an area where you're really seeing your kids struggle or you personally are struggling. Um, tired parents make for, you know, low patients and cranky parents and the same with kiddos. So we really want to um, make sure that we're addressing this particular area as well. Okay. Now I'm going to turn it back to Denise for another key wellness tip. Yeah. So I also think we need to think about sleep and stress as part of the kids learning process. I mean, because the poor sleep affects cognitive function during the day. Like Addie said, so many, so many things happen during sleep. Um, but I also think that we need to, th the reason sleep and stress, stress are paired together is because they're, they're both sort of, uh, two sides of the, two separate sides of the same coin where it's recognizing that our bodies have this natural, um, way of 
like having these peaks and dips in terms of our energy level throughout the day. And like Addie said, it's really hard just to be go, 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 and then just right, and then, okay, now I'm going to stop and go to bed. I mean, it, that's, that's tough. Um, I know for me, I've been really working hard on being mindful of when I have these dips in my energy and looking at it like, what's my behavior during those times? Am I effective? And if I'm not, then it doesn't make sense for me to try to do activities that require a high level of, of multitasking or, or attention or things like that. Um, and with me being mindful of this and observing it in my own body for myself, it's allowed me to, to really look at my kids and um, help them figure that out for them. So we're going to talk about mindfulness here, which is sort of like a buzzword now. A lot of, a lot of attention is being paid toward mindfulness in schools and for kids in particular, and for good reason. I mean, there's just so many benefits. There's an emerging, bo emerging body of research um, that indicates mindfulness can help children avoid or improve their their attentive abilities to pay attention. Um, it helps them to calm down and to make better decisions. Um, so we're talking about emotional regulation and cognitive focus. Um, but what we're really saying is you really want to try to think about creating space for kids to just have downtime and just be, it doesn't have to be that, you know, you're putting on meditation music and sitting in a circle and having them say, Oh, <laughs> you know, like that, that's not really what we're talking about when we say meditation or mindfulness. It's just about creating space. And sometimes they don't want to do that. You know, they might, one of my kids is, it can get really edgy and, I have to I have to identify that hey we need to slow down here. She may not want to, but I got to I got to kind of really really push her to do that and then afterwards she feels better. So there's a quote by Eckhart Tolle that I think is is relevant here. In today's rush we all think too much. We seek too much, we want too much, and we forget about the joy of just being. And kids they know how to just be they actually do um but our schedules are such that a lot of times they're doing a lot of executive functioning a lot more than maybe we did growing up they have high levels higher levels of anxiety and um they're being bombarded all the time. So in children specifically, mindfulness has been found to mitigate the effects of bullying, enhance focus in children with ADHD um, and things like that, and reduce in attention problems. So um, just this really wanna leave you with that, the importance of, of helping to you stress less and then also you know, model that for them, but also create space for them. And um, again, if you want more tips and more info on this and more ideas and where you want to chat with us to brainstorm, we're always happy to do that. Um, so now let's move on to the final of the core four. And I'm always get fired up to talk about exercise and movement. Um, I... It's funny because I really think that, that people think of movement and exercise as, as a way to lose weight. I just think that our society, we're, we're programmed to equate exercise with weight loss. And um, while, you know, yes, that is a benefit of it, um, it's just really overall health. Um, you know, you may not need to lose weight, but... Uh, movement every day is so important, especially since so many of us spend so much time sitting in front of our computers. And our kids have fewer and fewer minutes at recess all the time. Um, so I've heard um, from a lot of friends and family that they struggle with exercise in their life. 
Um, but I really, you know, they like, usually they're talking about exercise, but I really like to challenge people to consider um, not exercise, but just activity. So change your, your mindset. And this can be true. You can do this as a family. So you just think about, you know, when the weekend comes or after school, how can you increase your activity as a family? Um, get outside, go screen free, have fun, just play games, play tag, um, just enjoy each other. And if you know people who have a consistent workout routine, um, they usually have something in common. They enjoy the activity that they're doing. So you don't want to feel like it's a chore that you need to check off your list. That's just not fun. Um, and there's a huge difference here. So, so I encourage you to change your mindset and just look at, look at what are the things you'd like to do and how can you um, maybe bring some movement to them. Also, get a, grab a friend and um, take breaks. Breaks are good, getting back to the stressing less. And if you can go for a walk on those breaks when you just need some fresh air and get outside, that is also great. And that counts toward, towards activity. Um, so it's not all or nothing. Um, and if we can model this for our kids, that is super important. It goes a long way. And really the goal here is to teach them how to live long and strong. Um, and that their body is a tool for them to just go out and do great things. So that's the way I like to look at it. Um, and that's our fourth component. So we're going to move towards wrapping up. And uh, we hope that these simple practices, um, while well, we know that they'll help you raise super healthy superhero kids that can go out and uh, just be rock stars in this world as they were meant to be. Um, but we hope that we've armed you with some strategies and some tools. We're going to have resources available, but um, I think if you can simplify it in, down to these four things, um, it'll go a long way for helping arm your family uh, this year. So Addie, do you want to uh, close us out? Yeah, so um, absolutely, yeah, thank, I just want to say thanks for making those points because I think they're, they're really valuable. You know, our goal was to look at whole body health. Um, you know, for me as a holistically trained health coach, for me, it's not just one particular thing. It's really doing um, a suite of things, right? And so, you know, it, it's it, the core four is really like all the pieces of the pie connected together from the mind and the body perspective. Um, and one thing that we really want to say is that it's so important to care for yourself as you would your child. Nothing that we presented today is rocket science, um, but there is science behind it. And I think most importantly, we just all need friendly reminders. So take this as one of your reminders that, um, you know, you have to prioritize your own health um, in addition to your kiddos. So, um, you know, I think, I think we all want to live long, healthy lives. And so we're just encouraging you to be a role model, be a role mama, um, show your kids how to do it by doing it yourself. Um, I think, you know, these are just some of the tips that we do. We eat a, a mostly plant-based foods, uh, mo eat mostly plant-based foods. Sorry, that was a tongue twister for me for some reason. But, and that doesn't necessarily mean you have to be a vegetarian um, or a vegan even. You know, neither Denise or I are vegetarians, um, but we do really prioritize eating plants um, as, as a big portion of our total diet. And making sure you know your sensitivities to things. A lot of our own health issues can stem from um, our bodies not agreeing with certain things that we continue to put in our, in our body. And maybe we don't necessarily feel super sick, but we don't feel great either. 
So it's really important to know um, what your sensitivities are. Get blood work done. Like do the work and invest in your health to really know what it's going to take to feel your best um, and be kind to yourself. You know, one of the things that we wanted to stress throughout this um, is that, you know, you don't need to be a perfectionist. Just like I was saying with the meals, like don't overcomplicate it. Don't put this really high standard as a parent. Just try to make some healthy choices that are easy for you, that you can easily integrate into your busy life um, and do the best that you can. And, you know, don't worry about getting it right every single day. Like that's just not realistic. And then the last thing I just want to say um, is that if any of this gets you super excited, like it does for Denise and I, and it's interesting for you, um, let us know, get in contact with us. You don't have to be a health coach to help others live a healthy life. And there's lots of ways to get involved. Um, and we'd be happy to explore this with you further. So please reach out to us and let us know if, um, if you want to learn more how to not just get healthier yourself, but to help um, inspire others to do the same. And with that, we just want to say thank you. Um, keep calm, <laughs> live a healthy lifestyle, and you'll reap a lot of the benefits in that process. Um, and then there's lots of ways to follow us. Um, we do a lot of posting on Instagram, on Facebook, and share a lot of our healthy lifestyle practices on a regular basis. So this will be included in your handout as well that we're going to um, send out. So um, don't be, um, don't, don't be afraid to reach out to us. We love talking about this. This is why we made this our business now. So um, don't be shy. All right. Thank you guys so much. Um, we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.